Hi, my name's Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Well, today I have got something I am really excited to show you. And we've seen this before and this is a uh, series of images taken with both uh, polarisation and non-polarisation and directional light of um, a what would look like a, a spot on one of the Amaza uh, vibrator plates. Uh, from uh, Project Amaza in Japan. And what it kind of gives you the impression is that this central area is raised up and there is something that's either specular or specular and um, refracting going on in the center here. And so uh, this is one of the main things I wanted to test here at the Magic Sound Lab in California uh, on the SEM. And uh, I've actually uh, done that today and I am... Um, totally excited to tell you the news. It's actually 10 past 2 in the morning here, but I can't wait and I've prepared everything. So let's see if we can do this. So um, what we did was uh, we used this pair of tin snips here to cut one of the plates. So thank you, Dr. Amaza, for allowing uh, us to cut the plate. And it was put into the SEM and you can see it here. Uh, and uh, it was in there uh, for some period of time today. And I'm going to close that up just to keep everything clean in there. And uh, a quick look at it to start with. And uh, we have it here. Uh, this is kind of a plate area. And what I saw immediately uh, when I turned it on was this geometric structure in the middle. So I thought I would zoom into that. And you can see it's, 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 it's septagonal. It's... Uh, Maybe a hexagon, but yeah, maybe a hexagon uh, type shape. Uh, uh, but uh, I thought that was quite interesting. So I thought we would have a look at that uh, with some uh, elemental analysis, uh, just to get an overview of what the kind of elements are in this. And all of these files you will have access to. Um, so uh, if I go down here, the part in question is uh, uh, sample 960 uh, of this particular thing. So I'll have a look at what 960 is. And uh, we'll go down. Da, 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 da. Now, there's one thing that comes out as uh, tellurium and rhenium, and uh, we might like to um, think about whether that's just some uh, interference. Uh, but anyway, uh, 962 uh, is the only one that has chrome in. Now, this was meant to be magnesium chloride. You can see all the magnesium chloride in every sample on that, uh, on a palladium coated uh, stainless steel plate. Uh, so uh, everything there is as you would expect in this column, this column, and this column for the prone surfaces. Uh, there seems to be a lot of iron and nickel, uh, and there seems to be the odd production of calcium, potassium, uh, uh, sulfur, silicon, aluminium, uh, and sodium. And uh, you're always going to get a bit of oxygen, of course. It's exposed to the air. And there seems to be sometimes a wide amount of uh, carbon. But what you can notice here, and we'll come on to this later, it's a bit of an inspirational point, but when the, the chrome is there, uh, you've got uh, quite a high iron content as well. Um, there's a, a low level of magnesium. And also here, the uh, iron level is even higher than it is there. And uh, you can see, and, and uh, nickel's quite high in both cases. Um, the Where the iron's high, uh, also the magnesium is low. So bear that in mind, um, and uh, I will take you to the next image. Uh, a whole bunch of stuff that you can look through. So this one's not so in interesting. There was just a hot spot there, and uh, you can look at that data in your own time. Uh, now, this one is just showing kind of like a bubbly area, and I thought I'd have a look at that and see what's going on there. And essentially, uh, this... Uh, I've got two sample points here. Uh, and if I go down, you will see that... This area has, uh, this this clean area has got 43.98% uh, per, uh, palladium by mass, uh, atomic number 13 there, but um, there's plenty of palladium. Uh, and uh, 
here we have um, uh, slightly less, I think it is. Uh, am I saying it's right? Uh, well, it's about the same. But anyway, um, this looks basically like clean palladium. Now, I do have one reservation with some things that I might say today. I need to check with Dr. Amaza to see if the uh, stainless steel was coated maybe with nickel to start with uh, before it was plated with palladium, or is it just straight palladium coated? But anyway, there we go. Uh, so I will go back and we'll look at close three. Uh, Okay, so this one's quite nice. Uh, we have this kind of cleaned area here, but uh, sort of equidistant from this, you have this kind of like area where the, there seems to be these kind of bubble areas that maybe have gone over the top and exploded. And this kind of gives the suggestion that there was kind of a, an expanded in front uh, of material or something uh, which formed a bubble and then, you know, that fractured. But maybe there's some gas being created. There's this dark area here, I don't know. And there's this curly, curious little structure over here. So, uh, firstly, we had a look at these two. And uh, we also had a look at this structure over here. But we'll have a look at what that is. Um, these aren't the most exciting part of uh, this presentation. So, I think I might just skip that. Uh, you can again look at that in your own time. But uh, here is uh, the first of uh, the uh, money shots, <laughs> as it were. So we are looking at that same area. Now, look, there, there is the central spot that we saw. Look, it is centre to this uh, wave front. And it, it, it looks like there's, you know, it's kind of like, boink, <laughs> uh, right from the centre. I mean, there's a little bit of skewing. Maybe if this was a cavitation bubble, it came in at this angle. Uh, I don't know, and it, it, there seems to be this cleaned palladium ring, uh, and then there seems to be a kind of like the shockwave or debris field outside there. So in, in the main debris field though, there's this little curly thing here, and uh, this is the central spot, and this is our little curly thing here. I just wanna look at the curly thing, so um, a couple of spots on there, and uh, when we look at this, uh, chrome, iron, nickel. Um, a lot of chrome, iron, and nickel. Now, of course, uh, the steel may have some chrome in it. Uh, need to check on that. Um, okay, so. Uh, yeah, that's just basically uh, chrome, iron, and nickel. And again, you can look at this in your own time. I, I'm tired, so I want to get this to the... <laughs> The really important things, uh, which is uh, this one. Okay, so here is another spot. Uh, again, uh, central to at least these three sides. There's a different thing here. Maybe there's a couple of spots over here, and that's caused some sort of competing wave front uh, that's uh, stopped that from traveling to the full radii. But anyway, uh, this is quite interesting. So we went into this, and uh, what's quite interesting here is you can get, again see these bubble areas and the fragments that come off, and you can actually see some areas where the, the bubble is still encased, uh, and this one's had its top cracked off. But again, there's a central point here, and we had a look at that, and it's highly surprising. Um, and it does support uh, Leclerc. Um, so here we have the central point. And remember we are seeing this kind of specular, kind of trend, maybe refracting thing in the middle. Um, sometimes you can see a, an internal reflection, like reflection well, what seems to be an internal reflection. Um, and I mentioned that in the video that I was discussing this. But what you can see here actually is is kind of like a refraction looking through and also it's it's quite geometric almost like it's a, a, a crystal there but what is it let's have a look well here we go it is predominantly carbon it's like a clear piece of carbon it's actually got a reasonable amount of nitrogen in there um, the outside here is just oxygen and nitrogen so th there is basically no oxygen on that so ha have we synthesized diamond? This is right in the central spot. Uh, is this the kind of thing that 
Leclerc was talking about. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, you know, carbon, he says, and uh, nitrogen and oxygen, they're kind of what you get in a dead star. Uh, it's kind of like the end of the fusion chain as far as the star's concerned, apart from, you know, some other heavier elements. But um, also, uh, I noticed the, there is a... Where there's nickel and... Uh, 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 iron they're not in the same place um <laughs> uh, they're kind of like you know one's one's nickel and one's iron and, and they're separated but you can really see uh that the carbon uh in this potentially a diamond in in the center here uh is really separated so what i wanted to do is pull out a little bit from that and look at kind of this scale and uh in this scale um an absolutely striking feature came out of looking at the um, the uh, elemental map. And I will look, show you now uh, what carbon, nickel, and uh, chrome is uh, in this place here. So I'll actually go to the uh, section that was mapped. So uh, they will match. So here's the section that was mapped. So it's just the, the central part. Um, and then if you look at this, look at this. Boom. Okay, so this is where a carbon is. Uh, is there another uh, spot here where the carbon is, another diamond? Um, are these two spots? Are they counter-rotating like this? Or is this one spot and you've got a tail here and a kind of some tail here? This is shadowing, by the way. Um, it's shadowing because this is actually very raised. As you can see here, uh, this is when it when it goes around the different lights. You can see a shadow there, and you can see a shadow here, and you can see a shadow here, and you can see a shadow. So this is actually quite raised. So these structures are not cavitation. They're not cavities on the surface of the um, palladium coated uh, stainless steel plate. They are actually deposits on there. Um, so really, this what this made it look like as deposits and, and built up, that is exactly what it is. And uh, so it looks like we've got some uh, shapes around here. Now, if it is just this central one, then these it's like a galaxy. And uh, you can basically see uh, that maybe you've got some diacotron uh, instabilities here, maybe. If this is causing intense uh, pressures enough to form diamond then there's some maybe diacotron uh, instabilities around here that are similarly causing smaller levels of uh, uh, compression. And that the compression uh, that is in these sort of areas is sufficient to synthesize nickel. And in these areas, uh, it's, it's sufficient to synthesize uh, chrome. And uh, we'll get on to potential uh, combinations for those. So, Let's have a look at just the carbon. That's just the carbon. So in this one, it kind of does look like maybe there's there's two. Is it coming in there? Is it coming in there? Is it? I don't know. Is the is these the actual vortices, or is this the core uh, where the action is going on? Um, this is the chlorine. It's kind of pretty much everywhere. Again, this is the shadow because of the um, uh, the fact that the electron beam is coming from over here, so it's it's not seeing it over there. Uh, actually. The, these are highlighted because they are actually thrown up so much higher. So if you go here, these actual pieces are quite high. So they're catching the electron beam. So uh, if I, uh, for instance, show you the palladium area, the palladium is just around the outside of this deposit. So uh, we go back, you can see here, um, and the palladium is on the outside of the mound, as it were. You can get an idea of the mound by looking at the oxygen here as well. Uh, so um, here is the nickel uh, alone. And again, it kind of gives a suggestion there may be two, but maybe it is just the one. Uh, but certainly there is some spiraling going on and potentially some diacotron instabilities here. Now look at the magnesium. It's quite aligned with where the nickel is, uh, the iron, it's kind of like pretty much everywhere, 
the chrome here uh, is, uh, you know, in its own place. And it's kind of not where the iron is so much. And it's, it's a bit like where we have this uh, nickel chrome here. I think maybe I've got another one where I've got the the iron and the chrome. Here's a, a multicolor map with the SEM. So you can see you're not getting any color data here because uh, there is a uh, shadow being cast, but you're catching uh, on these structures. So these are kind of nickel. Uh, the yellow spots are iron, these yellow areas, yellow all the way around here is is iron. And, uh, and then you can see the palladium creeping in around the outside. Uh, and then even nickel and the rest of the de debris field. So they're kind of not in the same place, the iron and the nickel. Uh, and uh, this is just the iron. This is the chlorine. Uh, this is the palladium. Okay, so what I want to talk about then is how this could be possible. What are we are seeing here? And the one when we when we looked at this um, in Japan, uh, they did a test with a, a water test to see if there were various uh, elements uh, being generated in the magnesium chloride uh, deuterated five percent deuterated water uh, with a vibration plate, palladium coated, and they they uh, found iron. And I said, "Well, that's just coming from the plates." And then I did a quick calculation using the two to two reaction tables here. Uh, at uh, our uh, Philip Powers in, uh, version uh, of uh, the Parkamorph reaction tables with our own input from the MFMP, nanosoft.co.nz 2to2.php. And if you put in the query uh, uh, magnesium and chloride, chlorine, um, the, the reactions that come out, funnily enough, are basically um, iron, iron, nickel, uh, uh, iron, iron. In fact, if you don't have the neutrino processes in, uh, you're effectively just getting nickel, and uh, uh, that, that's that's synthesizing iron and nickel. Um, and then uh, I thought, well, uh, where's the nickel coming from? So uh, it, maybe it's a, a fusion reaction, not a two to two. And lo and behold. When you have magnesium and chlorine, uh, it fuses to various isotopes of nickel. Okay, so there, there are reasons why we're getting this build-up of uh, material. The, the last one was, um, where is the chromium coming from? Um, and, and why is it where it is? Now let's go back to that. Uh, so you can see the nickel and chrome. The chrome here and the nickel, it's like not in the same place. Uh, and we'll go specifically to that. Uh, so this is the nickel. And I'll find the chrome. Um, <laughs> Oh dear. There's the chrome. Calcium uh, Chrome. No, right. What watch this? There you go. So they're not in the same place, but what I also noticed is the uh, chrome and the magnesium are anti correlated. And this suggested to me, sorry, the chrome, magnesium, chrome, magnesium. And unfortunately, the way I saved this out, uh, they're both blue. So what I've done is I've actually created another one here where you have chrome and magnesium in the same place. Uh, but I've, I've changed the color of magnesium to red down there. And so you can see uh, that is the chrome and the magnesium I drop in. And it's cross-correlated. I'll take out, uh, uh, anti-correlated rather. So I take the chrome out and you see 
it fits in where the, the, you've got this light, darker area here, darker area, meaning there's less chrome. And if I put it in, the chrome fits into these areas. So I got the idea that maybe mag fusing of magnesium was uh, causing the uh, production of chrome. So I ran the equations in the MFMP's calculator and lo and behold, this is what I got. <laughs> magnesium plus magnesium. Uh, there's a nice common isotope or here, 24. Anyway, the, 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 there's plenty of uh, all the isotopes there. But it makes, it makes chrome. <laughs> so the anti-correlation of this uh, it perfectly fits the notion that it's fusing. So, um, magnesium and chlorine, chloride uh, is fusing to nickel. Uh, 35 is common, 25 is recently common. So, you know, uh, getting to uh, nickel and so forth, uh, you can have uh, iron and nickel being synthesized here and chrome can be synthesized here. So what we have is basically something that really, really, really looks like it is fusing. And so uh, if you look at here on the, this data, uh, you can see if I turn off magnesium and chrome, there is our carbon. And here is the nickel, so carbon and nickel together. You can see they don't sit in the same place. Okay. And then the chrome and the magnesium. And then if you take the nickel and the iron, iron here, nickel, iron, nickel. I take out the iron. So, <laughs> um, I think Dr. Amaza is actually fusing material. And if you can imagine that these plates uh, are um, have got deuterium going on, the, the, the actual carbon in the spot here, in the middle here, uh, potentially the carbon could be forming, for instance, from uh, eight, uh, what is it? Uh, no, it will be, uh, uh, it's, it's tri-alpha, so it'll be six deuterons, uh, maybe. Uh, or maybe it's just coming from mashing everything together and just the the the, organize, the shape that it forms is diamond. Um, why not? Um, you know, the, the organization of the matter. Um, anyway, so uh, there we go. I think uh, then if you fed this with radioactive material that doesn't really want to be in its unstable state and you're effectively creating pressures to synthesize elements uh, that is going to reorganize itself into a stable element and this could potentially explain why it appears to uh, uh, stabilize uh, matter. Uh, this is good support uh, really for um, the uh, claims of uh, uh, Mark Leclerc uh, that uh, diamond is formed and that um, it's <laughs> the pressure at the center of the collapsing bubble if that's what we're seeing and um, uh, yeah so I'm really excited I'm going to publish this video it's not the best I've done but um, I think that the, the, the information in it uh, is extremely uh, valuable and uh, I think uh, you can have a look at uh, all of these images and the associated data with it. Bear in mind it is very raw, uh, but I think, think the essential message is that there are uh, fusion pathways uh, to the production of the chrome, to the production of the nickel uh, in two different cases, and to the production of iron. So um, I think, uh, you know, I would like to have your opinion on uh, what I'm sharing here and uh, if this uh, really is uh, fusion that is going on in the and fusion and uh, fusion sort of fission but nucleon exchange going on in the Amaza vibrator system. Thank you very much for your time.